Okay, we're back here on our program, Inside Bicol. This is your host, Fred Verdon, with our guest here, uh, Beda Prela. And uh, we'd like to continue our discussion. Uh, Beda, you were talking about the need for oneness as far as the political, uh, you know, uh, political grouping here in, in, in Bicol. Now, I've noticed that there's a brewing issue of, uh, you know, there's a desire to uh, divide the province into two. I'd like to find out from the business sector is what is their position as far as this issue is concerned? Is that a major issue or is that, what is the position? Right now, the, the, the business sector doesn't have any position uh, on, on this matter. As a matter of fact, probably it's not viewed as a very priority issue as far as business is concerned. Now, uh, of course, there are little talks from there, from here and there. And uh, what, what can be taken from the grapevine is that, you know, uh, the, the question is what is really the motive behind the division, uh, the proposed creation of a new province? Uh, accordingly, s uh, size would matter in terms of management because right now some areas are not provided the basic services. But I suppose uh, when areas are not provided, when, when the provincial government are, is not is unable to provide for uh, the entirety I, I guess there are there are other uh, officials government officials who are provided with with uh, with uh, their own funds no okay. uh, the funds that are at their disposal uh, that can be utilized to augment whatever the whatever the, the provincial government cannot provide for. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, there are uh, each of the cog each of the representatives do have their PDFs, mm -hmm. and this is this this fund are at their disposal. Mm -hmm. Although there are limitations, probably you have you can only spend this for infra. But I guess how come other other uh, other representatives are able to you know circumvent yeah. and uh, come up with their own you know uh, their their own pet projects yeah. <laughs> their own pet projects to to be implemented no yeah. funded from the pdf so that you know if if one one uh, one political figure has been there for so long mm. how come these things are not able these basic things are not are not being able to uh, are not uh, present or provided for uh, as as a way to augment what is uh, what is uh, uh, what the provincial government cannot uh, so i guess in terms of management uh, they are talking about you know how much era can be provided now I, I guess these are just you know uh, but we have to first of all un unsolve or we have to resolve the problem or the impression that this is politically motivated that uh, the purpose of uh, we have to uh, abuse or <laughs> should I say answer or uh, take away the reason that this is only for the perpetration for the purpose of being able to perpetuate and power this thing has to be solved first before okay. any other so thing. it seems that the uh, there's a lot of perceptions that the move is more on a political move but on the other hand it's a wake-up call also for the present administration because uh, there seems to be also a long-felt need in other areas for development. So that seems to be the issue right now. There's a political move. On the other hand, it's also a wake-up call that they have to do something uh, for the areas which uh, they believe has not yet been uh, given the full attention. Yes, of course. But uh, should, I, should I say on, on one part, an observation is that maybe the provincial go government has has given so much emphasis on one sector forgetting the other sectors so the other uh, other uh, sectors in the society other areas of service basic services that should be provided for now uh, to that extent yes I, I will I will I will be open for discussion and and uh, see what what should be what should be done and I guess the private sector is even willing also to help in this okay. now there is also another program being pursued by the present administration on the need of each local government to have their own website or to be able to publish uh, what they're, they're doing, sources of funding, uh, you know, uh, in short, to make it transparent. Uh, what is the position of the private sector on this? Of program? course, this is a very welcome move. 
because transparency will, will allow us to to be able to participate you know? participate in in what is what in the governance because uh, the private sector will not be able to will not be in a position to participate when they don't know anything so with this website with the with these figures uh, with everything being seen in this website uh, for uh, established uh, projected in this website you can gather data in this that you can actively the private sector can actively participate in improving the governance and I, I think they owe they owe this to the people uh, this is one important move that I agree but hopefully you know uh, it's not only for the purpose of you know saying that we have this we have that but you know uh, for for whatever purpose but for the ultimate purpose of really showing everything all the transactions nothing is hidden uh, nothing is uh, hidden from from the scrutiny of the of the people of the of the uh, constituents so that uh, each and everyone can 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 look into this analyze and participate share their uh, opinions and analysis and uh, contribute in the in the better in the betterment of governance okay. now people say that power is a major consideration when somebody would like to put on investment here. Now, they say that one of the deterrent of investment here in the Bicol area is the high cost of energy. I'd like to find out from you, what, what was it uh, on this particular issue? Yes, uh, actually, this is an issue. This is, this is an issue which has been taken up in, you know, in, in the proposed Bicol autonomy thing, you know, well, uh, the uh, whereby uh, whether we will we will st because right now the reason why the the price of power is high because we belong to a grid okay. uh, we are only a component of the grid and uh, being part of the grid of the national grid therefore uh, uh, all others has to be taken and whatever we do not enjoy even if the power comes from the Bicol region, we don't enjoy any any benefit except for Tiwi, where they are enjoying uh, the benefits of the royalty, and that's why uh, relatively the price of power in in Tiwi is uh, relatively lower than the rest of the region. Now, but what we're saying in the local what what is being so said in the local autonomy, or when we have you know the autonomous form of government, when you have regional governments, then. Uh, it becomes now a resource of the region, and therefore the region will be in the pa in the position to to you know sell it, you no know, sell it to the other regions who will be utilizing the re the the power. So uh, this is one this is one advantage actually uh, in in that in that concept in that proposal uh, that uh, we 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 go on to you know uh, what we call. Uh, uh, dividing the the philippines into auto autonomous regions you know? uh, because you you become to manage your own resource you do you do not give this to the uh, to the rest of the country well in that case maybe that's one way that we will be able to enjoy uh, cheaper uh, cheaper uh, power because it comes from us no although considerably uh, there are uh, there there are loans that has to be paid because of uh, because uh, which were spent to tap these resources to develop the geothermal uh, so that we will be able to so uh, th th that's my opinion there uh, okay. I guess uh, but but definitely the cost of power is very important uh, for investment to come in meaning to say if if we will be able to maintain this on a very affordable level then that is a big attraction for investment to come okay how in addition to the other elements. Okay. How about the uh, tapping of this renewable energy? Because that's one of the programs that I think the government would like to pursue, that in uh, the countryside, people would be able to tap renewable energy, like mini hydro, like the solar, the wind. Because aside from the fact that it's but free, it's renewable and good for the environment. How far have Bicol gone into this uh, particular area? Um, we have i i don't know I, I mean as far as i'm concerned there are only a few a few investors who has gone into 
you know, mini hydros. Well, uh, you've been one of those. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, we have a, a mini hydro in Buhi, you know, uh, also here in, in Panikwason. The, the wind power were looking, uh, the, it was uh, Bagasbas Beach was looked into. Katanduanes is a possible uh, so for, for the wind power to supply the, the requirement of the province. Masbate, more so uh, right now, Masbate, since it's far from, they have, uh, they have uh, a, a power jar above a power barge. barge. But, it's, but the power barge is much better than what used to be uh, in, in Masbate. No? Uh, this is a, uh, they have a better source of, a uh, better supply of power there right now. No? But uh, the, the cost is uh, it's just high. But not until uh, alternative renewable source can be developed in the area, then. But Masbate, I think, has potentials for it also. Now, we're going to have the National uh, Congress or for ads is coming. Uh, you know, November. there's going to be a lot of people coming in. Are we ready to you know, accommodate them? Do we have sufficient? Uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, well, the place will never be considered if it's not ready <laughs> okay. as, a, as, a, as a convention site. No? Uh, I guess the, the Governor Elray uh, has been very convincing about it. Uh, of course, being able to get uh, to outdo, out, uh, you know, outbid Cebu, Baguio, uh, for that matter. Well, of course, we have new things to offer. Uh, so th over these are events that uh, should be, uh, you know, we have to take advantage of it because there's going to be an opportunity to right. show uh, big now, in support to that, now of course, accommodation will not only be in, in the in the in in, in the uh, capital area, uh, but Naga is benefited by that, and I think we have seen so much in, uh, a, a very a tremendous increase in, in accommodation rooms in, in in Naga. I used to remember when I was provincial director of DTI oh. that uh, you know uh, we were looking, we were talking with the hotel managers, and we're asking them how come they have to increase prices, the room rates during Peña Francia, because well at that time the reason was that the only event that could happen that they that the, that for them to be able to uh, increase the rates is during the Peña Francia fiesta. Because for the rest of the year, there are uh, the the the, the uh, you know the the occupancy is very low, but that is not quite true anymore. All year round, uh, we have increased our room number of rooms, our room capacity. Uh, we have in the the occupancy is uh, has gone higher, much higher than before, and that's why what I can well in relation to the province and the city being considered being declared as a pilgrim city then hopefully the room rates will not you know go no. tremendously high during the Peña Francia fiesta <laughs> okay. well uh, I know that you're very busy my last question is that uh, being a business consultant what would you advise those who are starting uh, you know to become entrepreneur uh, based on your experience what would you advise them um one thing is uh, uh, part of the effort of the of the of the Metro Naga Chamber. You know, we have the annual Bicol Business Week, you know, uh, which adopts the uh, uh, the theme uh, "Make it Bicol." In other words, come and invest in Bicol. One is to look into the province, into the region. Come and look into the region and see, because more often the reason why BBW was instituted is because you know a lot of Bicol was has often been. Uh, skipped. Mm -hmm. In other words, businesses, investment will go to Cebu, Iloilo, Bacolod, okay. Davao, etc. And, and one time the IBM manager was coming to Bicol and they saw each other, all the other managers at the airport and they were asking, where are you going? I'm going to Bohol, da, etc. Et and when the IBM guy was asked, where are you going? I'm going to Naga. And they all said, what the hell are you going to, to <laughs> do in Naga? <laughs> so, uh, we have so much to offer already. And facilities as far far improved investment opportunities are more defined, uh, specific, and I guess we are ready to answer all the questions as far as investment is concerned. And that's why come and visit Bicol. You will be able to see the opportunities. You will be able to calculate the returns that you will need in your investment and I guess all you have to do is go to the different uh, go and visit the different LGUs the chambers are ready to answer you 
specifically our chamber and all other chambers in the region they are ready to assist investors who would be interested to come and invest in the people region okay uh, thanks a lot better for your precious time uh, i know that uh, many of our viewers here on this day they've learned a lot uh, on this platform. so we'd like to thank our viewers and we'd like to encourage you to keep on watching this and because we'll be inviting uh, people the decision makers so that they can probably share with us so, so once again we have CNN Inside People, TV for the Naga. We'd like to thank our guest, Pedro Preva. My pleasure. My pleasure, Pedro. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.